Hey guys, I'm just gonna wait a few moments to get everybody set and ready for today's great education that we have lined up for you. Good morning, happy Monday. I hope you guys have a well-rested weekend. All right. Again, welcome to today's webinar, Internet Inspiration, Creating the Ultimate Digital Presence. This webinar is brought to you by Aesthetics International Association and Dermscope Magazine. It's also sponsored by Advice Media. Uh, my name is Dorian Reyes, and I am the assistant editor of Dermoscope, and I will be the moderator for today's event. Today's webinar is presented by Michael Antosi. Michael is a growth consultant and has worked with thousands of aesthetic practices since 2010, and he has transformed cl countless clients' digital presence every day. This webinar is interactive, so if you have any questions for Michael, please submit them as they come to you, uh, because after we have his presentation and a demo, we'll actually be doing a short Q&A. So if you'd like to take a moment, you can find that button, you can say hello and where you're joining from, please do that right now. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Michael. Michael, how are you today? Hey, Dorian, I'm good. How are you? Good. All right, here, let me uh, share my screen and let's dive in. So can everyone see, Dorian, can you see my screen okay? Yes, you are coming yeah, in we're loud and clear. Perfect, okay, fantastic. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining the webinar here today. And uh, whether if you're watching this live or if it's going to be on a recording, um, I know that you're going to get a lot of great information and insights, really just in terms of how you can make your practices online presence all the more productive. So my name is Michael Antozzi. Um, I am one of the sales directors here with Advice Media. Um, just to give you some background on myself in brief, I've been consulting with aesthetic practices uh, for about 11 years now at this point, really with helping them to get much more production and value from their online presence. And that's essentially what Advice Media does as well too, in terms of really helping aesthetic practices. Uh, today's topic here is called Internet Inspiration, Creating the Ultimate Digital Presence for Your Practice. And I'm always very excited to be able to give this lecture and conversation. So uh, you're gonna wanna buckle in, get ready to take some great notes as well here too, because a lot of the things that we're going to uh, discuss here in today's conversation are very actionable. Um, it really helps to put you in a much better empowerment decision uh, position in terms of getting more leverage and production from your online presence. You're gonna get a ton of great knowledge from this as well too. Um, the last thing I will say, there is some interactive parts of this conversation here today where I might ask a question for you guys to type into the chat. So uh, just get your fingers ready. If you know, when I, um, a few questions that I'll be asking for you and uh, away we go. All right, so that being said, let's dive in. So hopefully everybody recognizes what this uh, little uh, uh, logo is here, which is Google's logo. This is the start of any patient's search journey as they're coming into your business, as they're coming into your practice. I don't care if your practice is 100% reliant on its marketing to get every single patient into your door, or if your practice is 100% reliant on referrals and word of mouth patients. In other words, we're not doing any marketing all of our new patients or any business is coming through word of mouth. Each of those patients has come to you or visited you on Google's platform first. This really is the entry point into discovering your practice. This really is your storefront. Um, any patient's going to have their first interaction with you on Google first. And so knowing that this really is the top of funnel, what are you really doing to position your practice to really get better growth opportunities from really the, 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 lo the lowest hanging fruit, which is obviously a Google search here. And think about it from this perspective as well too. Since March of 2020, how much more FaceTime have we had with our devices and our computer screens? A ton. Look at what you're doing right now. We're participating on this interactive conversation here through Zoom. So the FaceTime, the access to really having patients' attention, believe it or not, really has not been greater than ever before. Since the pandemic has started, we have actually seen surges within interest of different types of aesthetic services, whether if you're a med spa, 
whether if you're a cosmetic surgeon, whether you're an esthetician, we have consistently found rises in terms of search inquiries on Google's platform. So this really is a content marketer's dream to really get the most best face time with prospects as they're looking you up. So what are you really doing to best position yourself? Well, first and foremost, we have to understand what Google is, okay? First of all, Google governs 92% of worldwide searches. So hopefully we can all make the agreement when we're talking about search, it really happens on Google. Now, these are also some statistics that I think will really kind of blow your mind here. One in 20 searches on Google's platform is healthcare related. Think about that. Think about everything that we use Google for from seeking out say, you know, hey Google, what, where's the closest Thai restaurant near me to anything else that you're looking up online? One in 20 is healthcare specific. Now that metric might not seem like a lot, but Google actually recognizes its influence in terms of connecting patients with healthcare practices, aesthetic practices as well too. So much in so as a fact that a few years ago when Google made its last big update, it, it was titled the medic update. So that is how much influence Google recognizes it has in terms of paving the pathway for patients to find you. Now, within that as well too, Google on average makes about nine changes to its algorithm every single day. So just to kind of give you a bit of a visual here, if this is Google, right? And Google is this ever moving target. It's always making refinements and changes to its algorithm. And that's not just coming from google.com, that might come from Gmail, that also might come from YouTube, Google is really collecting data on its users to always improve the search experience that people are having. But this is Google, it's an ever moving target. And within this moving target is a high propensity of healthcare related searches. So what this visual should really help to inform you is that your digital marketing strategy has to be fluid. It has to be ever adapting and it has to always be growing. I'm actually coming to you from Los Angeles today uh, today's a very r rare day where we started off and it was raining. It's rain supposed to come later on in this afternoon. We never really get rain here in LA. But here's the thing. Here's the point about this. Google today has changed more than the weather outside my window. So that is really the, the rapidness of how really search happens. And that's why you really have to have a very fluid and adaptive marketing strategy if you want Google to really work for you. Now, we've kind of understood a little bit in terms of how Google works. I now want to kind of get into what is the mindset that aesthetic patients are really having as they're, seeking, as they're searching for you or seeking you out online. Well, here's the first thing. Aesthetic clients, we want things now. Think about this. Think about whatever your practice is, whether if you're an esthetician or a med spa or a cosmetic surgeon, how long have patients really been thinking about investing into the aesthetic services that you offer before they actually make that decision to come to your practice. It's probably a long time, but when we finally made that decision that we want to come to you, we want that information. We want to have that experience right now. It's like, okay, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Now I'm ready to take action. And your web presence really has to capitalize most on that type of demographic and that type of patient. Secondly, as well too, I'll show you mine here and hopefully, uh, I'm making an assumption here that everybody that's watching this webinar has a smartphone, right? This is the power, this is power, immense power that's in the palm of our hands. Just today, I was looking up stocks and then buying diapers for my son on Amazon. And then by the way, I got turn by turn directions to my babysitter so that way I can drop them off in time to give this webinar presentation. I did so much in just a short amount of time and it was because of the power of the internet that's in the palm of my hand. And that's really what we are used to as consumers. And so that is the mindset that people have when they're actually seeking you out or visiting you online. And the second thing then, as we then start to really engage with you through your social media, through your website, we wanna have an easy experience, right? When we're looking to come to your practice and we're like, okay, this looks like a great place for me to go to, I don't wanna to have to go searching all over the website to try to find a phone number, or I don't wanna to have to like go all over your website to try to submit my information so that way you can follow up with me. Good marketing is simplistic and it literally spoon feeds the opportunities to patients as easily as possible. You know, I played high school football and one of the things our, my football coach would always tell me is that you have to take care of the small things before you, and, and if you do that, then the big things will take care of themselves. And the inverse of that, if you're kind of applying this towards your digital marketing and your web presence is that if you're not taking care of the small things, 
it makes the harder things much more difficult to achieve. And there's an old adage that we have in marketing that a confused mind always says no. And the first experience that you never want to create for people as they look at you online is to create a no experience. So what are you really doing to make that search journey and really ultimately converting into your practice as easy as possible for that aesthetic patient? Now, I was giving this lecture a few years ago, actually, and um, I was speaking at the aesthetic show and I was giving this presentation and afterwards, I'll never forget this, a doctor had come up after, uh, uh, come up, had waited after I was giving the lecture and he kind of, you know, waited for the crowd to clear and he came up to me and he thanked me for the presentation, but he told me that he had a really big problem at his practice and he was hoping that I could help him out. So I said, all right, well, what, what's going on? What can I, what, you know, tell me what, what's happening at your practice. And he said to me, he said, listen, I have a practice that's in Calgary and I'm just going to come out very forthright with you and just say this. I am the best injector in Calgary. I've been doing this for over 20 years. And I'm telling you, Michael, nobody does injections better than I do. My results are fantastic. People look natural. They look great. And I'm telling you that I am the best at what I do. <laughs> and I kind of sat back and I'm like, okay, uh, are we going to, are we going to talk about your problem now? So I said, well, all right, well, what, what's going on? Tell me what's happening. Like, what's the problem What's going on at your practice? And he goes to tell me, he goes, listen, there's this new practice that's recently come into town. They opened up about six months ago and I'm freaking out because my patient load, my schedules are down by about 20%. And even though I've been injecting for about 20 years, I have no intentions of slowing down. I want to continue to grow my practice. And that's really freaking me out with the impact that this new practice is having on me. And I said, okay, all right, well, thank you for sharing that context here. Let me, um, let's just take a look at your website and see, like, see what's going on right there. So he gave me his website address and I typed in his website name and I looked at the website and I'm telling you within three seconds, I looked at that doctor and I said to him, doctor, I know exactly what your problem is. And he goes, well, how can you just tell what my problem is? You were just only on my website for about three seconds. And I said, yeah, yeah, I, I was. That's all the time that I needed. And he goes, well, what's going on? And I said, no, I said, listen, you just got done telling me that you are the best injector in Calgary and that no one does injections better than what you do, right? He goes, yeah. I said, your website makes you look mediocre. <laughs> and I got to tell you, this website was a dinosaur website. It, it looked like almost it was built from one of those Windows DOS programs back in the mid 90s. It even had one of those uh, uh, website trackers, you know, like how many hits like the website has, like if you visited the site, it would, it would uptick by one. So it could even tell you like you were the 10,000th visitor to that website. And I, and I, then I looked at his competitor's website and it was very vibrant. It was beautiful. It had great photography. It should, uh, the, the office was shown off right on the website. It was an absolutely beautiful office. They had some really great content on the doctors and the other providers that were there. And it just made me feel, it made, it just gave me such a great vibe. And it's like, it, it pre presented this energy, like, yes, I want to be a part of this practice. And unfortunately, the doctor who had been injecting for 20 years really had rested on his laurels. He had self-admittedly had said to me that he hadn't visited his website in, in years. And that is the first impressions that your patients are always judging of you when they come to your website for the first time. So... I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment and a test here. And so this is if you uh, get ready to, to type some stuff in here to the chat. On this next uh, frame, I'm going to show you six different websites. There are going to be three across the top and then three across the bottom. And first impressions about your practice are made within 2.9 seconds. They've actually have done studies to understand when people are going to say, yes, I'm going to go here or no, I'm going to leave. So. With that said, I'm going to give you 2.9 seconds to tell me which are the websites that stuck out to you the most. And again, there's going to be three across the top, three across the bottom. All of them are numbered. I just want you to remember which is the number that stuck out to you the most. Okay? So with that being said, here we go. Okay. I gave you a little bit more than 2.9 seconds, but I wanna, I'm kind of curious to see here what is happening in the chat. And so if you could tell me, uh, going here to the Q&A, what are the numbers that stuck out to you to the most? Can you, uh, can you type them in for me? 
Katie Snyder says five. Number five. Number five. Anybody else? Number five. Thank you, Julie Fisher. Cool. So going back here, let me start, let me share my screen here again. With, uh, Lauren says here, the middle bottom. Okay, well, let's take a look at these here. Let's kind of go back here again and take a look at these. As we're taking a closer look now, maybe we have a little bit more of, uh, sorry, hold on, let me just remove the chat here. There we go. As we go to here, I'm seeing a lot of fives. There might be a few sixes in terms of how you might be answering this as well here too, but I think that we can all make the agreement that one, two, three, and four are out of the mix. And why is that? Because we're seeing a lot of text here, a lot of space consolidation, you know, on number two, for example, there's so much blank space that's over to the left and to the right. Number four just has a ton of text. It's like, okay, well, where do I actually now go for information? But when you look at five and you look at number six, and again, if you had answered five and six, uh, congratulations, you won the prize here. There's qualities as to why this is the, these are the best websites because they're the most visually engaging. Our brains as humans, we're wired to be visual. We would much rather watch something than say have to read or sit through a bunch of text. And this is the part where you really want to be maximizing first on your first impressions of your website. It has to create a sense of excitement, almost kind of wrapping that patient, that patient up or that visitor up in a warm blanket of comfort. So these are really the sites that always win. So let's kind of recap here a little bit. We've talked about really the nuances of Google, understanding that it changes so much that you have to have a very fluid and adaptive marketing strategy online if you want your trafficking to work, right? We've also talked about the mindset of aesthetic patients that they want things now, and we also want to have a great, easy experience. We've also just established that first impressions are so paramount to getting more website engagement and thus lead generation from your website. Now, I want to now introduce you to a concept that we have that's called the pyramid of success. And to give you some context on myself with the benefit of doing this now and consulting for about 11 years and having really consulted with thousands of practices in my time, what I will tell you, and maybe there's some resonance with this as well too, that a lot of the times as I start to work with clients, they typically always come to us from a sense of frustration. Oh, I'm paying all this money. I'm spending all this money on my marketing. And honestly, I'm just not seeing the ROI from it. Or, you know what, I, I, you know, I can never get in touch with my website people or whatever that might look like. Now, the website side and not getting in touch with your website people, that might be one thing. That's obviously how the company is structured. But when it pertains to ROI and really maximizing the best value from your internet presence and your online marketing, there absolutely is a process and a building block way that you have to follow in order to really maximize the return on your investment. And how many of us, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands here, but just think about what you're doing at your practice right now, where maybe you have a website and the first thing that you're doing is social media. Not to say that that's not a good strategy, but the efficacy and the return on investment that you're going to get from that is not going to be as high when you're ignoring more fundamental building blocks as it relates to your growth strategy. And so what I'm going to introduce here to you is a concept called the pyramid of success, which is really a roadmap that you really must take. And this is where you, if you learn something here, you could certainly talk to your company about employing some of these things to really get the most and best ROI from your, inter, from your internet presence. And so when folks come to us and they say, Michael, you know, what's the first thing that I'm, if, if I'm gonna do anything online, you have to have an amazing website for your practice. But again, the next thing that you do is not social media. The next thing that you do is not even SEO. Those things come later. And if anyone ever tells you that those are the next things that you should do, run, because that is not the best and most effective way to really generate revenue. The next thing that you really must do is you have to make sure that your local citations and how you are set up for local search is always accurate and it's also consistent. From there, you want to be employing a very effective uh, online review strategy. And when I'm talking about reviews, what I'm really referring to are Google or Facebook reviews. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. From there then, at that point, that's where we really want to start to layer in social media and staying very consistent with how you're posting, say, on Facebook, 
or on Instagram or on TikTok. And when you do these first four things, this is a complete internet presence, okay? Everything that you need in terms of establishing your foundation and your, fundament and your fundamentals are done in this sequential way. But if the goal that you have is to actively grow your practice and to grow it faster and more accelerated, only at that point do you want to be layering in search engine optimization or SEO. And I'll talk to you about, I'll, I'll talk to you about each of these things as we proceed within this conversation here. And the last piece is then paid search. But know with SEO and paid search, for it to be effective, it oftentimes is going to be more expensive to do if it's done the right way. And it also takes a consistent effort to really see a good return on investment from, okay? So now let's talk about the website and dive in here to this. So when I lecture at conferences and get your, get your, uh, get your keyboards ready here, because I'm gonna ask a question here. You know, you have this thing called a website. And I'm gonna ask a question here. Talk to me or type into the chat, why do you have a website for your practice? So that's the question. Think about, I'm sure everybody that's attending this lecture has a website. Talk to me about why do you have a website for your practice? Brandy Summer says, to be found by new clients. Victoria, brand awareness and e-commerce. Daniela says to talk about what I do and to bring in clients, insight into my business. So Amanda, let's see what Amanda says here to display the services that I offer. Lauren says to show clients what we offer in description, new clients, product awareness, and to show who we are as estheticians. So I will say all of these are components to what a website does. And some of, some of the answers are hitting on this kind of lightly, but I really wanna kind of hit the nail right on the head, okay? You have a website to make your practice money. That is the whole reason why you have a website for your practice. This, make no mistake about it. This is a sales funnel of getting people in. And as a marketer, I don't care if say somebody spends an hour on your website or if they only spend 30 seconds. So long as they conclude that visit by picking up the phone to give you a call or frankly to take some inbound call to action into your practice, the website has done its job. So a website that works is one that converts leads on a high level. Yes, we're here to look up information. Yes, we're here to browse and see, see the services that you have, maybe see how long you've been in your business for, but ultimately all that ends with us taking a call to action into you. So again, a website that works is one that generates leads. So your website really has two primary functions. First of all, it has to generate traffic. And this is really where the digital marketing comes into peace. This is where the channels that you're really doing to increase your visibility happen. Things like citation management, things like consistent social media, consistent reviews that you're generating, your SEO, consistent content, consistent before and afters. All of these things make you louder in the digital classroom. And just to kind of use an analogy here, what Google really wants of your internet presence is for you to be that annoying kid in elementary school that when the teacher asked a question, you were always like, oh, 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 pick me, pick me, I have the answer. The more that you aggregate content and generate content, you are just showing a search engine like Google that you have much greater internet activity. But keep in mind, it's not just relegated to one channel like social media. Content needs to be everywhere to really maximize on your shots on goal. So again, the first thing is, is that you, your, your website's first job is to generate traffic. Now, as that traffic then gets generated, the website's job, the infrastructure of the website has to be set up to maximize on your practices lead generation. So again, things like, is the phone number easily identifiable? Um, is there a way that I can submit my information quickly through the website so that way I can schedule an appointment or get a, an appointment scheduled? And I just wanna share with you what, what I would consider or what, what is a, a well-converting website versus one that is a poorly converting website. I'm gonna start with this one here as well too. 
And again, we're not going to pick on the, the, the design of the website or anything else like that. You can have your opinion on what this is. I think obviously what we had established from the previous slides, you could probably say that this site is probably somewhere within the one to four category. But I'm not here to talk about really the design aspect. What I am here to talk about, though, is how the website can convert. So leads are generated as one of three ways. Either it could be a phone call that, that, that comes in for your website, a chat, which can be facilitated, or a form fill, okay? So those are really the three primary ways in terms of how you generate leads. So to share this website here, for example, we have the phone number that's listed right up here on the top of the screen, right? But the moment we start to scroll down, guess what happens? That phone number, phone number gets completely lost. And if I'm a patient, if I'm on this website, maybe I'm in, a, in this local area here, and you know, I'm like, you know what, I wanna go to this practice. Well, where's the phone number here? Remember what I said earlier that good marketing is effective and you have to really spoon feed just that next step call to action to the patient. This is exactly what I'm talking to you about. Now, as you take a look at a website like this here, for example, this is built much better for conversions, right? And we're gonna see, it doesn't matter where we start to scroll, the moment I start to go down, guess what never leaves my eye line? Oops, pardon me. It's that phone number right here. I'm sorry, I'm zooming in here a little bit. No, <laughs> there we go. The phone number, it's right here. And if I, st if I stand to go out, it doesn't matter again where I scroll, that phone number never leaves my eye line. The same applies as well too, as say you're scaling this website down onto a smartphone, right? Because chances are very likely that when I'm on a smartphone here, I need to get in touch with the practice. So are there things like mobile click to call where again, I can just simply click on a phone icon and I'm connected to a practice. You can see I clicked on this phone icon here and my caller on my, on my, my uh, website is coming up here. Mobile accounts for about 75% of your traffic. And so you have to ensure that really you're, bu you're building your website first and foremost for the mobile experience first and the desktop experience second. Now, I also had mentioned chat as well. Chat is a fantastic integration into your website. Now, what I will say is that there are a variety of different chat products which are out there. Some are live chats, some tend to be bots. What we generally find though is a sense of automation and really just giving people immediate access without you having to really be on the back end to engage with chats is going to be the most effective way for you to generate leads. This is uh, um, just a website that happens to be using a chat product and it's very proactive in the sense that, you know, once we go to this website here, and I'll also use this one here as an example as well too, you're going to notice that after a few seconds of inactivity, um, a little bot is going to appear and it's going to basically invite a dialogue. Generally, what we have found is that websites that integrate chat into, into the website, well, on average, we'll see about a 40% increase in terms of their lead generation. Why? Also, too, it helps to literally keep your practice open 24-7, 365, without you or, say, your staff having to really engage with that. Think about, especially for, say, the smaller practices that might be watching this webinar, where maybe you have a practice where you are literally the chief cook and bottle washer at your practice. How often does it happen where, say, people might be inquiring with your services and you're just simply not available to, say, pick up that phone to help convert that patient because you're with another patient? This really can help to give you a great backup plan. And I'll share this with you just to kind of help you understand, again, how different products are set up. This is a product that happens to be done through artificial intelligence here. And, um, oh, it's actually not letting me click on this. So, oh, we're having a Zoom fail here, guys. <laughs> uh, let me stop my share here and just see if I can utilize this. Oh, I can't really utilize this one right now. So let me do, let me go to, let me go to this one and see if I can uh, generate a chat through this. Yep, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here again. Sorry guys, bear with me here. Technical difficulties. So what a chat should really always be structured to be is like, hey, how can we help? Yeah, I'm interested in getting a consultation. For, let's just call it 
uh, microneedling. And you can see how basically a bot is going to respond here. Hey, we're gonna have a team member reach out here to you. So can we start with your name, Michael? And just a few follow-up questions for you. Can we have your zip code here so we know what area of service that you're in? I'm in LA here. It's asking now for my phone number. And then what it will then ask for is an email. So essentially, you know, there's different ways that chats can really be set up, but this is a really great effective way of really working to convert leads effectively and to become more or less your backup plan. And again, the data that you really want to understand about chat is that it's so effective because it's with certain products, they could be built to be more proactive to really engage a dialogue. Again, making it much easier for that patient to communicate and contact your practice. Again, it helps to keep your practice open 24 7, 365. And again, it could really be an effective lead gen source for you. So that's really where chat, you really want to make sure that you're building it to help to engage uh, effectively with your patient base. Now, in addition to that as well here too, your website, you must have a mobile responsive website. And I think that most probably everybody might have this on their site right now, but just to utilize this as an example, when I say mobile responsive, really essentially what Google wants to see are websites that have adaptive frameworks. So you'll see that as I start to scroll in with this website, things start to get cut off here a little bit. In other words, the site in and of itself is not really actively adapting itself to my screen size. And that's not a good user experience. More so, having a responsive website is something that Google is really looking for when it wants to promote the best websites for local search. Now, utilizing this one here as an example, again, you'll note that as I start to scroll in here, the whole framework is starting to adjust itself to my screen size. And so this is what a responsive website actively looks like. And so again, if you do not have a responsive framework, if your site is an adaptive and best position to be optimized for widescreen desktop monitors, down to tablets, down to say smartphones, you must have a responsive framework because again, that's another quality that Google is really looking for when it's looking to promote the best websites for local search, okay? Now, going back in here to our slides. So once we've established here that again, a website that works is one that converts leads on a high level. So when folks then come to us and say, and say, okay, well, what's the next thing that we really should be doing? It really starts with your local citations and making sure that your practice's name, address, and phone number, and how you are being listed among what we refer to as local directories is always accurate and consistent. So this is where uh, the conversation might get a little bit more complex or more nerdier. So I'm going to kind of just set the table here for you. Again, as we established, search on Google, there's, Google drives about 92% of worldwide searches. One in two searches is always local. In other words, it always coincides with your geographic market, me being here in Los Angeles, or say somebody searching near me, right? So Google, just to kind of, and again, as we established as well too, Google gets about one in 20 searches on its platform are healthcare related. So Google gets a lot of localized healthcare traffic. So when Google is really looking to promote the best internet presences for local search, what is it looking for? Well, I'll tell you what it's not looking for. It's not looking at your social media. It's not even looking at the content on your website. What it wants to see is how accurate and consistent is your NAP data among local directories. NAP is an acronym that stands for your name, address, and phone number. And it's very important that how your information is being listed among local searches is always accurate and consistent. And you might have had a, an experience like this where maybe you start up a practice, right? And this is how we're going to be doing business as, and you know, this is where I'm going to be located. But then maybe you know, a year goes by and you know what? Uh, maybe I'm gonna rebrand the name of my practice. And oh, you know what? We're also gonna change, uh, we're gonna start to integrate a tracking number because what we're trying to do is track more internet leads. And then, oh shoot, I rebranded again. And now I have, I, because of that, I have to have now a new phone number because of my new brand. All of this data gets indexed online through data aggregators. Things like credit card files, uh, government records, leasing agreements. And once those errors are out there, they will stay there. And frankly, it's impossible to be able to control. So 
what you really have to do and talk to you about, talk to your SEO company is about making sure that how your localized data is showing up online is always accurate and consistent. Uh, Michelle from Queen City Beauty Group and Wellness, I really appreciate you making yourself a volunteer here for today's demonstration because this is um, kind of what I'm talking to you about in terms of local citation aggregation. This is a scan report that I put together on Michelle's practice. Now she has a practice that is in Matthews, North Carolina, right? This is where her, uh, this is where her street is located on Matthews Mint Hill Road, Suite G. And this is the phone number that's here. But in running this scan report, what we're finding here is Michelle's data is showing up as 97% citation inaccurate. And just to show you here, these are some of the local uh, directories that Google looks at all of these. Some of these directories you probably have not heard of, like Easy Local or Local Database, uh, showmelocal.com. But the point of this that's important to understand is that Google looks at all of these. So even though patients might not necessarily go there, it's not to say that Google doesn't look at all of these because it does. And this correcting your information everywhere has a direct tie with how Google will show your website as being the best local search result. And what we can find here is again, with looking at Michelle's data here, again, her practice is on 16, uh, 616 Matthews Mint Road. Well, here we're seeing on your the Yelp directory listing that it's aggregating her as practicing on Pineville Road in Pineville, North Carolina. There might have been another title for Nichelle's practice at one point called Boss Locks. Um, other of these directories simply not even being found here for as well, too. We can also see that Nichelle, again, this is her Google My Business listing. It's practicing, it's listed as being on 616 Matthews Mint Road. But you also have another Google My Business profile out here for your practice that you might have been practicing in Brawley, California at one point in time. So again, all of this misinformation that is out there must get corrected. So talk to your internet marketing company about some ways that they can really help you because again, this is the foundation of search. You cannot do anything else in terms of strategies, social media, SEO, without doing this first. And just to drive this point home even a little bit further here, this is some trending data that I wanted to share here with you. And I took a few variety of different terms, uh, Kybella, hormone therapy, microneedling, chemical peel, Juvederm. Hopefully these are common services that people that are attending this webinar are offering at your practice. But this is trends.google.com. And what this really helps you to understand is the ways that we actually search for things uh, or these different terms. And again, I want to point out the locality of different terms. I had mentioned to you that people always search um, locally, either in Michelle's case, it could be Matthews, North Carolina. People also search near me. You know, Google, who's the best Botox injector near me? And take a look at how these different terms are actually being queried. Kybella, one of the most breakout ways that we're finding Kybella or how patients search for Kybella is they say, Google, hey, Google, who's doing Kybella around me? Who, what Kybella treatment near me. Looking at hormone therapy here, bioidentical hormone therapy near me is one of the most common ways that this term is being sought after. Microneedling, uh, RF microneedling near me. Chemical peels here. Chemical face peel near me. Looking at Juvederm as well here too. Juvederm lip filler near me. So again, the way that you really position your practice for these locally based searches is 100% a function of making sure that how your data is showing up here is always accurate and consistent. So you wanna make sure that this is an essential part. It's not an optional thing, but you really, it's a must have thing as it relates to your online strategy, okay? Um, one fact here as well too, that I'll also uh, draw your attention to. This is such a growth, a huge growth opportunity for the majority of aesthetic practices that I work with because what we've actually found is only one in 10 practices actually have control over their local accuracy and making sure that's above 75%. So again, very easy win that the majority of practices really in your local areas are not doing. Now, if you wanna test this out here for yourself as well, so I know this conversation is being recorded, but this is a little short link. If you happen to copy this down, um, take out a post-it note or maybe take a second just to write this down, you can actually check out your practice's local scan by checking out this link here. So I would encourage you to take a look at this when you have a quick moment to do this.
Okay, so moving right along. So we've established that again, levels one and two is a great website that converts leads on a high level. And then at the next point you really have to focus on is your reputation score, or in other words, how you're generating more consistent Google reviews. Here's the thing. This is a survey that actually came out from Real Self, and 81% of patients have identified that reviews are a critical thing for them to research before selecting a practice to go to. As a matter of fact, 65% of people would not go to a practice without having a review. Now, there are a lot of review sites that are out there, but I really want you to focus that the, the gold standard as it relates to how you can convert patients most effectively is your Google review strategy. Because Google reviews give you so much more added benefit, not only just because when we do a search for, say, a practice, and I want to point out some of these here as well, too, from some of our participants, but every practice that I work with is always going to tell me that first and foremost, they are referral driven. So when we do a search here like beauty ritual skincare, what are we seeing or where are our eyes naturally drawn to? It's your Google My Business listing, which is right here. Same for Tory Prince. If I do a Google search on you, where are our eyes going to be drawn to? It's right over here. It's the same reason why we choose numbers five and six as being the best websites because they're the most visual. Again, our brains are wired to be visual. And this is really where you must make your most impact felt. Now, with all that being said, what I do want to point out here to you is that it's just not enough to have great reviews, particularly on Google. You have to be generating them consistently. And you want to generate reviews consistently because positive reviews placate into your local SEO. It's actually a signaling factor that Google wants to, that, uh, that Google is looking for. Do you remember how I just shared with you how a lot of search is local and we're ser ser uh, searching near me searches? Well, guess what also Google gets a lot of is best near me. And best is a very subjective thing. What my best is versus all the attendees that are on this conference, what each of your bests are, are very different because it's a personal thing. But Google gets a lot of this best, 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 best. So how do you really qualify that or quantify that? It's looking at the consistency of your reviews here. So again, you would look at the profile like this and think that, well, Tori's got some amazing reviews and I don't disagree. Her, she's 5.0 rated. But the problem though, is that her last review was from three months ago, right? And there's only 16 of these reviews. As we look at beauty ritual skincare, again, 5.0 rated practice here, but you can certainly see the level of consistency that is happening within this profile. And again, you know, beauty ritual skincare is doing this for two reasons. Again, it helps them with their local SEO, but because also too, the practice, your practice, this practice, anyone's practice is always first and foremost going to be built off of patient referrals. And this is really where you're going to make the most maximum impact. Now, the way that you generate consistency with your Google reviews is you have to have a process in place that will help you to do this. I can't tell you how many times I talk to practices, and this might be in your condition as well too, where you might say, Michael, I have so many happy patients. I ask them to leave me a review. They say they're going to leave me a review. They don't leave me a review. Well, it's because, again, just how the importance of lead generation and conversions from your website, your site has to be built for that. You also have to spoon feed that ease for a patient. What I would absolutely recommend is you invest into a, uh, either a, a text message based platform that will enable you to text out a Google review link directly to a patient's cell phone and make it very easy on them to be able to just simply click on a link. They're taken to your Google My Business page where they can then write the review. You have to make the experience very easy for patients. There's a lot of review softwares which are out there. Um, we have one as well too, but the point of this is, is that it's important to make sure that you have this as a part of your digital marketing strategy because this ties into everything else that you're doing online, okay? Going back here to our slides in a second. Again, some statistics just to take a look at here as well too. Four-star reviews, I'm sure this is not surprising, it works against a practice. The, the 25th percentile of the average review score is around a 4.3, meaning that the other 75% of practices locally are averaging better than that. So to really compete effectively for local search, you have to have fives and frankly, a lot of them. 
Now, again, it's what we saw in one of the examples here is that nine and 10 practices, and this is the majority of practices, they have not seen a new review in over a month. Again, this is the reason why, you know, I'm sure that in, in this particular case here that you had been seeing patients, Tori, that you've been seeing patients more than three months ago. Again, you have to have a process in place that will really help you to stay much more consistent on that front. Social media, I wanna talk about now social media here. And I know and looking at some of the examples here of the volunteers um, to, the, to this webinar here, you all have amazing social media. And it's not surprising to see for, you know, say smaller uh, aesthetic practices that, you know, you, you know, typically this is an area that you own really well. What I want you to understand though, is that all these other things that we're talking about in terms of effective lead generation, local citation management, review strategy, play into the ROI that you can help to get from your social media. So if things are working well in your social media and you don't have some of these things that we're talking about here, guess what? Those things can make your even your social media even better for, for trafficking purposes. But one main mindset that we have to understand is that social is search. Facebook as a, as a social media platform on average receives over 600 million business page views on a daily basis, right? So it's a ton of search. And prospects, patients are going to look at everything about you. But the key point of your social media is you have to be connecting with people in a real way. 90% of the practices that I see tend to do their social media wrong because they think that it's a sales billboard. And that's not why we go on social media to be sold things. We go on social media to engage with the brands and the businesses, the friends that we like. And it's through that sense of engagement that that does the selling. Now, I'm sure everybody here on the webinar has, is familiar with uh, progressive car insurance, right? Um, and who's the, who's the face of progressive car insurance? You don't have to type this in, but we all probably know her. We've seen, uh, we've seen all of the, uh, uh, the, the commercials throughout the years. It's Flow, right? Flow is the face of progressive. Now, this slide, is came, it's, it comes from a few years ago, but it really helps to drive home the point that we really help to engage with businesses, with, 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 uh, with people and not businesses. And when you take a look at Progressive Car Insurance Facebook page, they average about 343,000 likes to their page. And again, this is from a few years ago, so the numbers at this point are certainly likely to be much higher. But Flo, again, is the face of Progressive, right? We love Flo. She's quirky, she's, she's kind of dorky, but she's fun, she feels safe. Uh, she would probably be the person that I would call the babysit my 18 month old. Like I could probably trust Flo to watch my son. When you look at Flo's Facebook page, she has almost 5.5 million likes to her page. And again, this just goes to show you, same company, way more engagement though with this person, because again, we go on social media to really engage with those uh, businesses and brands that we like to follow. Now, just to point this out here to you, um, I want to go over to um, uh, Queen City B Group here again. Michelle, um, even though you need to be focusing more on your local citations um, and obviously the consistency of your reviews here, the one thing I do want to point out here about Michelle, this is great content. And you take a look at here, this is one post that she just had from two days ago. I want everybody to actually get your keyboards out. Say happy anniversary to Nichelle, right? And this is great. Like this is exactly what you wanna see. Yes, Nichelle is a great aesthetic provider. She, she makes her patients feel so much better about themselves, but like this is the whole reason, this is one of the reasons why we want to go to Nichelle. It's because she's a human, right? She is expressing her love for her partner. Happy anniversary here to you. This is, you know, I can't mask my feelings for you. Like, this is great. She's wearing a mask here. This is a great way of ba basically bringing in her relationship into her social media that helps to connect with her patient base in a very human way. So, Nichelle, congratulations. I really love what you're doing here. Um, if everybody wants to uh, like uh, or maybe follow Nichelle, she is at Queen City Beauty Group. Uh, take a look at some of her content because this is a great example about what a, a blend of great aesthetic content here is with kind of her life as well here too. So, Nichelle, great job on that front. So, when we go back to then our, our pyramid here, right, and we know that, again, great website that's well converting, um, layering in local citations, having a good positive consistency with your Google reviews, great social media. The, la uh, the next two pieces are advanced SEO. 
Now, what I will say is that the majority of websites that I was looking at for today's presentation are not in a position to do SEO. And the whole reason why that is, is because they lack content. When you want to really expand and drive more of your reach locally, if people are, say, looking up different types of search queries online, you have to have content on your website to be able to, to make that happen. Now, when you're cultivating content, a few things that you want to keep in mind. First and foremost, for every single service that you offer at your practice, you must have a dedicated page to that specific service. And you want to have a lot of content that talks about that particular topic. You really want to cover it holistically. Now, again, as I had mentioned to you, though, before, um, you know, this is Google. It's making so many changes on a daily basis. And there's a high propensity of healthcare searches within Google in and of itself. You probably don't have the time to be able to keep up on the content. So first and foremost, when you're entering with an SEO strategy, you really want to look at this as an integrated effort with the digital marketing company that you're working with. Your company should really be giving you guidance on content strategies. If they're the ones that are not producing the content for you, they should at the very least be telling you the types of content, the way that you want to structure the content on your website and how that needs to be made because there is a very specific coding way in terms of how you want to be able to do that. Secondly here, your commitment is, going to, is always going to trump your budget. The problem that the Botox injector early, earlier in this conversation had is that he was not committed to his internet marketing. He admitted that he had been, it had been several years since he had even seen his website. The reason why his schedules were down is because that newer practice was really invested into their online strategy and that was being felt. Um, they might not have had the budget that a well-established practice might have, but what they are lacking in budget, they're, they're putting more in terms of their time. So again, the more time that you dedicate on this is always going to supersede your budget. In other words, if you're just spending a lot of money and just not really contributing into it, it's not going to work as well. So know that you have to have a little bit of skin in the game for this to be able to work. You also want to look for ways to feature and distribute and promote different types of content, right? How many of us are shooting great videos for say Instagram, but we're not thinking about uploading that onto YouTube to then embed that video somewhere on our website. These are all things that again, make us louder in the digital classroom. Secondly, here is uh, second to last year is that you always want to structure your content in a question and answer format. And just to demonstrate this here, I want to share it with you. You know, when people search in questions, they tend to be more sophisticated searchers, right? They're asking deeper level discovery questions. And think about the last time either you bought a home or a car. You're not just saying, all right, well, what color is the car? You want to know how it drives. People that search in questions tend to be further along within their decision-making process and more ready to take action. And again, think about that from this perspective. You know, the aesthetic patients sit on their decisions for a long time before they ultimately make a decision to come into you. But when they're in that search mode and they're like, yes, I'm, maybe I'm looking at Morpheus 8, I'm thinking about RF skin rejuvenation, whatever that might be, you want to make sure your content can really position you as being that best resource here. So when you look at a page like this here, for example, you're going to see a page that's well covered holistically. You know, what is Morpheus 8? What does it treat? How many treatments will I need? All of these headers and then basically chunks of content. And that brings us to another point as well here too, is that Google really wants to index chunks of content. When you have your website set up in such a way where there's just you know, paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of information, that's not the best content structured way. And just to take a look at some of these websites here as well too, we're gonna take a look at Beauty Ritual Skincare. Just again, from a conversion perspective, first and foremost, we're gonna notice here that again, the phone number, not very easily identifiable, right? Like the moment we start to scroll down, the most important piece of call to action information is buried at the bottom of the screen. Tori Prince, the same way as well here too, you know, looking for a phone number here, very hard to find. Again, another practice that's not really utilizing the benefits of chat here, but that most important piece of call to action information, again, buried at the bottom of the screen. But when I also take a look at just these page or these sites in general here, especially when I go to things like services, for example, there's just not a ton of information on what these things are. There's correction, there's maintenance, there's transformation, but that's really basically it. Now I get to say skincare solutions, but again, think about it from this perspective. Again, I had mentioned to you, you have to have dedicated pages for every single service that you're offering at your practice. 
All this content here, skin solutions, anti-aging treatments, CBD solutions, they're all on the same page of content. And again, while that might make it more convenient for patients to just engage, it's not really going to help you in terms of getting better SEO or organic search traffic to your website. Same with Blush and Beauty Spa here as well here too. Just, you know, not a ton of information, no Q and A's about any of these things here. So again, I would encourage for these practices as well as other ones as well too, if your goal is to really accelerate more growth to your website, talk to your SEO company about getting some better content or how they can assist you with that as well too. The last thing that I also wanna cover here, um, and this will be a, a part of the presentation, um, but there is an actual structure or way in terms of how you really want to build in your page for SEO purposes. Again, a lot of subheadings with chunks of content, that's typically always going to be the best way. But again, remember, we want to have easily identifiable phone number, links to your, uh, uh, your, your NAP information at the bottom of the page here, perhaps even a map to where you're located. Chat as well, too, can really help with drawing in more conversions from the website. The last year is paid search. And again, paid search, the efficacy of paid search is it's the last thing that you do in the pyramid. And the reason why it's the last is because you have to be able to make sure that you're doing everything else before you start to engage in a, any type of paid marketing campaign. Now, what I will say is that paid search, it's certainly going to be much more expensive depending upon what your market is, the competitive of how, competitiveness of how terms are priced but it absolutely can draw in better conversions for you. And a lot of people might think that nobody clicks on Google ads, right? Absolutely incorrect. Google in 2016 made almost $90 billion of ad revenue. And uh, made, made, I'm sorry, made 90 billion, almost $90 billion in 2016. And 90% of that came from paid search. So what this really should tell you is that patients, as they're beginning their search journey, they start with clicking on ads. People might say, and I hear this all the time, well, nobody clicks on an ad because they're, they're, they're paying for that position and we can't really trust an ad. Absolutely incorrect. The data does not show that at all. And as a matter of fact, most people will start their search journey by clicking on an ad. And so again, when your goal is to really ex extensively really accelerate more growth opportunities, you always wanna certainly consider doing this with paid search or even say paid Instagram or paid social media on Facebook. But again, you never want to do that without having these fundamentals in place first. I've seen so many practices waste money by doing paid ads, but they have awful reviews or they don't have, say, a consistency of their review strategy. So again, you want to approach these things from a building block way. Everybody, I thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, just sharing with you my slide, this last slide here as well, too. Uh, this is my email, michael.antosi at advicemedia.com. My phone number, this is my personal cell phone number, by the way. So this is the same one that my wife and my mom have, too. But if you have any questions on any of these things, I'm certainly happy to be a, a guided resource here for you. So I do appreciate your time. I hope that you've gotten a lot of valuable information from this conversation. And uh, I also want to thank Dermoscope as well, too, for hosting us here today. Of course. I am... This is a great class. I really, I had to post about it on Instagram. We'll probably repost it on Dermoscope, but really great information. So thank you for bringing this to us. And I really, I just, I can't stress. It was, it was really great content. Um, so we do have some questions. So we have a few minutes. So um, we're going to maybe get to maybe a couple. We'll see. Um, so the first one is from Julie. Uh, she, so you mentioned about a um, particularly Nichelle, um, that her info is incorrect on many platforms. Is there a way to get that corrected on your own? Um, and if so, how would you go about doing that? That's a great question, Julie. So the sad answer is no. Um, you really have to have a process in place that will do the correction for you. The reason why I say no is because the misinformation comes from sources that you just cannot control. Again, that's why I talked about data aggregators, things like credit card files, government records, or leasing agreements. So what a citation management program will essentially do is it will create barriers to this misinformation from ever hitting these local profiles. And then the second thing that a citation management program will then do is it will ensure that the information that is correct is always hitting these local uh, local directories. I talked to some practices where they might say, 
you know, I've, I've tried to correct this on my own and I might have corrected it for a month, but then I checked it out the next month and it was defaulted back to the original way of the information. Again, that's because of bad data aggregators. So you really have to have a process in place. And this is a marketing maintenance thing. It's not just a one and done thing. Um, you know, once those errors are out there, they continue to stay out there. So that's where a citation management program will really help to ensure that your data is clean. Great. Uh, we actually got some feedback from our in-house esthetician, Lauren, who said that she's now going to revamp her website. So I just wanted to pass that along because that's that's great. Um, okay, so one thing. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, good, good. glad to know that we created uh, some some uh, some motivation there. Again, if I if there's any help that you might need, let us know. Awesome. Okay, so um, Victoria Prince or Tori Prince, um, she mentioned that she's always the impression that the more content that you have on a website. Uh, the slower it will be. What is your, um, I guess, past experience with that? Because you did mention how each um, each service should have its own page. Correct. Your, this, uh, this, the, 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 the breadth of your content has absolutely nothing to do with the site's load time. Now, maybe there are some heavy graphics on the homepage of the website that make it longer to actually index if say, you know, a video file might be a gigabyte, then yeah, that's going to really slow your load time down tremendously. Servers can also have an impact in terms of the site's time in terms of speed, but the breadth of your content is absolutely um, not the case. Uh, again, you, you want to think about the content like the food that you're feed you feed your child. I mean, that's really, it's the digital nutrition that your internet presence really feeds on. So no content, uh, the size of your content, the consistency has nothing to do with site speed. All right, I like digital nutrition. That's, that's very good, you should copyright that. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we'll do one more. Uh, Daniela asks, is it a good idea to have an about me page on your website in terms of, I guess, bringing in those clients? Would you recommend that? Absolutely, yeah, because here's the thing, what, what better way to be able to really promote your knowledge and to really make yourself uh, presented as a thought leader? You know, again, we wanna, when we're considering, aesthetics is, is competitive wherever it is that you go. Um, I'm sure even in Brawley, California, I actually have a client that's in Brawley, California as well too. It is, a, you know, and I know where that's at, it's, you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere and it's, it's, it's almost right there on the border in the middle of California. That is a competitive in, uh, area. So, um, you know, the more that you're talking about yourself, really demonstrating your thought leadership, I would even say if, if, if you have the gumption of doing it, Daniela, I love nothing more than seeing a video of the provider. You know, welcome to my website or welcome to engaging with me online, so on and so forth. You know, I'll give you a quick story about this as well, too. And I know that we're a little bit over time. A few years ago, my grandfather had prostate cancer. And... Um, he, he ended up getting corrected. It was a very easy thing. But my mom had entered his healthcare kind of late in the game. And because uh, my grandfather didn't tell anybody, he's trying to treat it on his own. My mom was freaking out over it, though. And she was like, I need to know everything that's going on about you. So she went to her, his, his next doctor's appointment. And um, the doctor was kind of like, like, Michelle, I've, I've, I've talked to your father about all these questions here. Like, why are you bothering me? And my mom was really upset about that, right? So at the time, we had actually just built a website for a client uh, that was a urologist in San Francisco. To this day, Dr. Raul Hernandez, if you ever watched this, you were still one of my most favorite people. Dr. Hernandez had made this whole welcome to my website video. And uh, you might even search YouTube. It might be on there somewhere. But, you know, I sent my mom to the website and she didn't even look at the content on the website to get her questions answered. She literally called me within five minutes and I can hear that like the quivering in the sound of her voice because she watched that video and she just was like, this is the guy who I want to go to. This is the, he even said in the video, while we treat urological problems, we, 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 we treat from the heart. And that just made my mom feel so great. And so, you know, absolutely brag about yourself on your website, have some content about yourself. If you have a video on there, great, do that as well too, because it's going to pay you dividends in terms of just separating yourself out from your, from your local competition. That's awesome. That's great advice. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for joining us, for giving us health education. Like I said, really great. Please watch the replay. Tell your friends to watch the replay. And if you missed it, thank you for watching the replay. Uh, but again, thank you guys for joining us. It's been a great Monday and I hope you guys have a great day. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care.